okay. So holding your wall can be different for everybody. I'm going to show you what I feel is comfortable for me and what works best for me based on the fact that I'm teaching you. But as time goes on, you may find different ways to hold your wall that suit you much better. So what I do, so this is the tail end here. As you can see, let's move these things out of the way so we don't have too many distractions. This is the tail end here and this is the working yarn because this is the yarn that is coming straight from our wool. And I'm working this lovely, beautiful, chunky wool, which is a James C. Brett um, party mix and it's very vibrant. Keeps me happy while I'm making. There's no point in having wool that's boring, is there really? Especially when you're teaching. <laughs> so, keep the tail end. You need at least... I was watching some of the other day and they said about hands width. Personally, I would probably go as far as that from the top of my hand to there because this is all about weaving in later on, which we'll talk about, um, about finishing our products in the last chapter. But for now, if we just get into the habit of having a tail that's probably about, let's look, let's have a measure. So let's put it there. Probably about seven between seven and eight, well, seven and nine inches long. Um, you don't have to measure it, but you can just go off a guesstimate. And it's just so that you can weave the end in and you've got enough to cut afterwards. So, this is what I do. I take my tail end, is always towards me, okay? I then wrap it around my index finger, under my middle finger, and then over my ring finger. Now, for some, you may not like that. It may not feel quite comfortable to you. When I'm knitting, one of the things I do is I wrap it around my little finger just so it stays, it feels a little bit more secure, but it's, it's not about being tight. You don't want your wool to be tight. What you want to do is find your rhythm or steadiness and you can pull it through and you can then just grab your tail, and your working yarn, sorry, and pull it back. <clears throat> what you don't want to be doing, first of all, you need clean hands, clean, dry hands. Sticky hands are going to be your obstacle as a beginner. So if you've been eating or you've been doing other tasks, just make sure you wash your hands and you, you, you dry them thoroughly because wet hands, especially here, the wool will stick. You will also get sweaty hands because you're learning something new. So that's going to happen as well. So you will find that the more stressed you get, the more frustrated you get, you may find that you get hotter hands. Um, especially the fact that you're learning something with your hands, you're going to be directing that blood flow kind of there, if that makes sense. So what you don't want to do is you don't want your hands to be tight. So when you're getting, when you're learning something new and you're unfamiliar, the first thing you'll do is you'll clench your, your hands down. And that will mean that the wool can't transcend through your fingers. It can't transition through. Okay. The other thing you might end up doing is the complete opposite, which is you'll be focusing more on your hook then you will be on this hand and you'll find that your hand is too loose, too open and it'll come through too fast and your stitches will be really loose. And I know you're going to think, well, how can I, how, what's the in between? What's the, you know, what you want is a semi relaxed hand. You don't want it overly tight and you don't want it overly loose. You want it so your wall will just transcend through, but that will come with time. Um, <clears throat> it will come with time because it takes time for your brain and for you to acknowledge the speed of which you need to work, but also the sensory the sensory um, feeling of the wool to understand like, oh, you know, that's moving at the right speed. Your brain will naturally acknowledge that once it creates that muscle memory in order um, of your stitches as, the, as it moves through and it will naturally happen. Um, as I say, when I first started, um, I had to recorrect the way that I'd been crocheting since I was 13. And I started doing that in my mid-twenties. So for me to go from <clears throat> working a different, completely different way to have to reprogram the way um, I was going to work for the future because of longevity and, and issues with my hand, it did take some time and it was fingers and thumbs. But when it happened, you ju it just happens and you just need to just trust the process and just keep working with it. I can promise you it will happen. It's just a lot of practice and just being determined and resilient. So the next thing, I'm going to put my wool down for now. I'll come back to the wool in a second. So there are a couple of ways you can hold your wool. Now, this is called the spoon way or the pen way. And you hold it this way with the thumb 
being the point that moves the hook. So you kind of work like that. It's more usage on your wrist, if, if I'm honest. For me, that doesn't work because I, I don't find that comfortable at all. Now, you might find that much more comfortable, much more natural to you, and you prefer to work as if you're directing it like a spoon. OK, for me, I'm a bit more like Charlie Chaplin. My thumb is still moving my hook, but I kind of work as if I'm, I'm cutting with a knife. So it's a knife mode. Um, and I use all of my fingers plus my thumb to take advantage of the hook. So the hook itself, <clears throat> obviously, we'll talk about this a little bit more in videos, but you've got the shaft here and then you've got your hook there. OK. There's going to be some terminology that I, well, some bits of terminology that I will use where I talk about using your advantage, that using the hook to your advantage. So at times you'll have the hook pulling up that way and as you go through, you will have it going through that way because you'll use the smoothness to your advantage. Locking in your hook, you'll be turning it around. But again, I will explain this every video, every stitch um, will go through how we use the hook because I can say it all now, but you're not going to remember it. So it's better to show you in action than it is to take to every small detail right now. So that's your, your hook. You can either do it butter or, um, sorry, butter, spoon or knife. I find that much more control. Um, I would have thought I'd have been more like that because of all the art that I do, but I found that a little bit more. I couldn't get the dexterity and I couldn't get the movement um, that I wanted. Now, again, everybody's different because I watch people working on videos on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and I see them using that method and I think it looks amazing. But for me, it just doesn't work. That's just my nature. So just because I'm saying that's my preferred method doesn't mean it's the only method. And I would say, suggest as you improve on understanding your stitches that you experiment with different methods to see what works for you, works best for you. There is no right or wrong. There's a hundred different methods, a hundred different variables to do things. And you know what? That's part of your learning curve. So what we hope we do is give you the stepping stones in order to, you know, move on and be able to follow those other videos, those other books that you may, you're going to want to buy, those hooks that you're going to want to invest in. So that's that section. The next section is we're going to make a slip knot and then we're going to move on to making a foundation chain. So we're going to look at the do's and the don'ts and all those kind of things. So I'm going to stop the video here because I am a rambler and I hope it helps explain um, quite a few things to you. Um, and I do excuse my gruff voice. I've had this hundred day cough. <laughs> so I'm sounding very, um, what's, the, what's the lady? I can't think of the actress, but she's got a very good Kathleen Turner, isn't it? Yeah, very Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to um, stop the video here and we will then continue um, shortly on the next video.